Hello, I'm Kurt Fargo with Microtools, and we're going to take a look at repairing or refurbishing a Kodak carousel projector. Today we're going to do the 850H. This particular model has remote focus and autofocus in it, so it's going to be the tightest of all the different models to work on. But still, we can do it and do it pretty quickly. So let's get started. Um, first thing we're going to do is I want to show you all the tools that we're going to use. Um, I use a quarter inch nut driver. Um, electric, I'm lazy, I do enough of these. Phillips screwdriver number two on a screw gun. Um, this is our grease gun. This is, just has super lube in it. This is our block and our rivet punch because we're going to need to rivet the link onto the plunger and our two focus motor gears. So we know right off the bat that all four of these parts are going to have to go into this projector. I use hemostats, hammer, Two more quarter inch nut drivers, one long reach and one flexible and cutters to cut off the old uh, rivets and a spring hook and a straight slot screwdriver. Sometimes I need that. So let's go ahead and start our disassembly here. Turn it over. First thing we're going to do is pull off our front leveling foot. This could be held on with a screw or a push on. We're gonna get rid of our, or pull out, not get rid of, but pull out our four screws, hold the bottom cover on. Three of them are the same. The front two are the same. And the one that's underneath the lamp cover is the same as the front two. The different one is back here in the corner by the rear leveling foot. This one's a little bit longer than the other three. Pull our bottom cover off, put it aside. Okay, looking at this projector right off the bat, we can see that our focus motor gears, this is old technology plastics, and it's already brittle, it's falling apart. This other piece, I bet if I just put it in my fingers here, again, just falling apart. So that's what happens with this old technology plastic. Let's go ahead and remove our, we're gonna remove the leveling foot and the cord wrap area. So we've got three screws for the cord wrap area. One, two, three, Our front leveling foot has two screws. This projector has an electrical circuit board in here, so it we can't really move it totally out of the way. We just lift it up and pull it to the side, getting the wires out of the way to give us room to work. Now there are three screws holding the focus motor in. One, two, three. This is where the long reach quarter inch nut driver works really good. Pull our focus motor up and out of the way. Let's go ahead and pull the gears off. Break them the rest of the way off. If your gear's not white or black and it doesn't break, you know, that's fine. You can leave it, but most cases they're yellow and they get brittle. Black ones can even be brittle and falling apart. So let's get our three screws out of here that came out of the focus motor. These are collared screws. And 
and they're all three the exact same. And let's show you where we're going to work here. We're actually looking at replacing the link, which was down in here. This link is, is busted. It's part of the solenoid that's right underneath here. But one thing we want to be very careful about is the focus lamp, which is right here. We want to try to not touch that. That's an adjustment. That lamp, if it gets moved around, um, is a lot more work. It's glued in place, and it's kind of a pain to deal with. So do your best to not touch that. To get that out of the way, I will normally take this shaft, push it all the way to the back. In this case, it's already as far back as it can go. And now we'll go ahead and remove the solenoid. There's two screws that go from the adjustment plate into the solenoid. That is these two right here. And then this is the adjustment screw on the bottom. With the gear out of the way, it's a lot easier now to get to these top two screws. Okay, our two screws that go into the solenoid are also collar screws, but notice they're much less thread showing. They're, they're shorter in the thread area. You do not want to mix up the collared screws. Okay, let's go ahead and this is where I use a flexible shaft nut driver to remove the adjusting screw. And now the adjustment plate will come out of the projector. As you can see, it's actually already turned sideways in here. So, and this is the position I want it in to get this solenoid. Let me show you here. The solenoid plunger is, is sideways so that we can get it to fall out into the lens cavity. So turning the projector on its side. Go ahead and get it to come out. This one, you can see how brittle these parts are. They're just breaking off in my hand. Let's cut my, cut my rivet out of it. We're gonna take the new link, put it in place. Then we're gonna use the rivet, not a cotter pin, the rivet. Go here, get our punch. And voila, it's together. Now, this is the area where a lot of people have problems, and that is getting this back in here. Again, we want to try to not hit that focus lamp at all, if at all possible. So I'll try to position the solenoid I'm trying to do this and keep my hands out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. So we got our solenoid opening here. I'll Use my hemostats. Grab the plunger. You notice it's forked. We're gonna stick it in back part of the slot first and then push it down into the front. Go ahead, plunger's in. Now we're gonna work the solenoid so that it goes back into this direction so that we can get the plunger down through this corner. 
Again, trying to stay away from the autofocus lamp as much as possible. I'm bending the plunger a little bit, just the rubber part, to get it down in here. Okay, we're in. Let's get this solenoid into position. Okay, now we're gonna work on getting the back fork of the plunger in there first. And I'll use my straight slot screwdriver here to push it down in good and to push the front part in. Okay, we're in. Let's go ahead and spin the solenoid around so that the holes are facing to the plate towards the plate where we're going to put back in now. Grabbing the adjustment plate, placing it in here. into position and we're just going to do the adjustment screw on the bottom first then we will actually mount the solenoid okay I got it in position using my flexible shaft nut driver go ahead and get the bottom adjusting screw in place. You don't have to get it too tight, just slightly snug. I'll now go ahead and take my collared screw, use my spring hook to push the solenoid into position. I like the electric the driver better here for this. Again, trying to find the hole in the front of the solenoid for this screw to go into. Now this one's fighting me a little bit. I'll go ahead and try the top one first now since the bottom one's not wanting to find its way home as easily. Okay, the top one found its way real quick. And make those there. Okay, it's in nice and good. At this point, I'm gonna look at my adjustment for the forward and reverse. And that's what this screw right here is for. This is our forward and reverse adjustment screw. So get everything out of the way. We wanna make sure that we're not touching the motor. I'll uh, get that out of the way there and turn it sideways. Make sure we've got everything clear to not touch the contacts on the motor. Let's get our power cord because this projector has a removable cord. Okay, 
Okay, so now let's look at our forward and reverse. Push the forward button. This should be coming up and going forward. The reverse button. So this one's, I got it in the right place to begin with. So no adjustment needed. Let's go ahead and take the power off. And let's work it on replacing our two gears. Okay, so the first gear we're gonna put on, goes. we call this the gear next to the focus motor. Um, you can use a nut driver with a hammer and beat this on as long as it's deep enough, but make sure you've got it supported on the back side of the shaft or else you'll bend the housing. But we do enough of these that I've got some special made pliers that I use for pressing the gear in place. Makes it quick and easy. But we do lots of these. Press it on, spin it around, make sure it's on nice and square. Voila. Okay, the focus motor. Before I put the gear on, I'm gonna throw a little bit of lube, some oil, light oil on the two sides of the motor on the shaft. Hopefully it'll work its way in. Spin a little bit, okay. Now I'm gonna support the back side of the motor. I'm gonna support this shaft. Gotta make sure we support the shaft. We don't wanna be banging against the motor itself. Okay, press that on with your finger. Tap it on the rest of the way with a hammer. Make sure we're supporting the back side. Okay. Focus motor's on. Let's go ahead and put it in place. Okay, make sure our wires are all out of the way. They're not behind the focus motor. Then we tighten it up. Turn it on its side. As Tom says, let's use gravity to help us out here and we've got the three collared screws which are all the, the same again using my long reach quarter inch nut driver Holes for the screws lined up. Take our second one in. The third one, it's back on the back side by itself. It's usually the, the hardest. It makes you drop things more often. But let's go ahead and get this back one in. Using a pair of hemostats to help us place it. is together now let's look at servicing the projector what lubes do we need to do where um, I'm gonna use the grease gun let's put grease on the focus motor okay we've got a bushing in here we can spin it around to get the right little slot where you can stick our nozzle to the grease gun in. I'm using the finger on the fan to to spin the shaft to get to it. You see it squirting out that that's good. Um, all the grooves in the cam need to be lubed with grease. The Clutch spring in here, I'll lube, try to get it down into the clutch spring. The fan. If you notice, this particular resistor is flaking. It's very common. Just go ahead and get whatever's loose, pull it out of the, and get, just get it out of there. You, you don't need to replace the resistor. Pull the fan cap off. Again, we've got a bushing in here that we lube. 
Okay, enough to go in there. Just a little extra lube inside the fan cap. Push this down. Now let's work with our, our oil. Where do we need oil? This particular projector doesn't have an access cap on here. So a lot of projectors have a small hole you can just oil it. So what you need to do is just this little notches here. If you just pull these back. Don't want to break them off. Be so gentle, just get this out of the way. And we're gonna fill this up with oil. Let it soak into the sponge. Okay, let's go ahead and put it in place. Snap it back in. Okay. Let's look at starting to put this back together. Then we'll check our adjustments. For, oh, wait, I forgot to tighten up earlier the screw for the adjustment. Again, I made this snug. I didn't tighten it up all the way. Been easier with the focus motors out of the way, but since I forgot to do it, I'll just use a wrench, tighten it up, to make sure it's nice and good tight. Let's go ahead and put our cord area cover back in position. Our front elevating foot into position and let's get these screws in place you remember we had two screws for the elevating foot and three screws for the cord wrap or cord storage area whatever you want to call it the newer projectors, it's actually a cord wrap. This one's actually a cord storage area. Okay, let's go ahead and blow all the extra pieces out of the projector. A lot of vintage dust in here. Maybe we should collect it and try to sell it on eBay. Okay, so I'm not a comedian. Let's go ahead and power it up and see what happens. Okay, it appears that our focus lamp is not working. And I obviously hit it with a solenoid when I was moving it in or out. So I will just try to uh, move the lamp a little bit and see if I can get it to come on. But I never tested it to begin with. So it may have been bad from the beginning. Well, at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually pull the lamp and replace it. To pull the lamp, I use a small straight slot screwdriver to get in here and undo it from its bracket. Kind of a snaps in place. It's probably best if I just go ahead and unplug the projector for now while I get this out of here. And this is the lamp. So you can see it's not coming out of there straight. Well, let's go ahead and see if we can straighten it up, if that makes a difference.
Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check voltage on the bulb and see if that is the issue. See if there's getting power. We are looking for AC voltage here. It should be around six volts if everything's working right. So I do have the six volts AC going across there. So we know that's getting power. The problem is the lamp itself. We will go ahead and pull the lamp out. Let's go ahead and unplug it and replace the lamp. The problem here is, is that replacing is not that simple as plugging another lamp in. They've got glue in here. They've used glue to keep the lamp in position. So we've got to go in here and clean these contacts, the backside of these contacts here, before we can stick another lamp in, else it won't at times. And actually the lamp wasn't bad. The lamp that was in here is good. Um, I can turn the projector on after I put a cord into it. You see, lamp works. So to put the lamp back in place, this is a little bit tricky. I use a hemostats. Stick the bulb in first. And I'm gonna to try to get it into the socket right here. But one thing I've got to do is I've got to hold the, the guide forward a little bit. And then I will try to snap this into place. If you don't hold the back side, like I'm doing with this screwdriver, it'll go too far back and won't go into the socket on the arm. Okay, it's snapped into place. Let's make sure it's still working and then we'll do our adjustment. Lamp is still working. Let's get a target slide here. Now that we've got the lamp in position, we'll check our autofocus with our target slide. The target slide, we want our target to shine right here in this position. Yeah, stick the target slide in place. You look through there, you see where the mark is. The mark's really, really close, but let's just double check here on um, if it'll work properly. To make it super accurate, we would do two things. One is we wanna have this dot lined up here with this slot. It's a little bit off, but it's probably gonna work fine. And the way we would adjust that position is by loosening this screw here and moving our sensor housing back and forth a little bit, but I bet it's gonna work just fine being that close. So, go ahead and pop our target slide out. We will now use our range slide. Our range slide tells us how far it should focus forward and backwards. It should go, stick it in. It goes all the way forward, it stops. Now let's, other direction. It goes and stops. Okay, pop it back out, go back the other, to the slide the other direction, and it works just fine. So, our focus is good. To secure the bulb in position, again, I drop glue up over the bracket and make sure it goes down onto the bracket and onto the lamp.
Get a lot in there. Now let's just check the general mechanics of the projector. Make sure it's still forward and reverse. Still working. Okay, it's looking good. The projector is now basically done. Um, we had to deal with one of the problems that we run into at times where the lamp gets knocked and you've seen how to fix that. All I got to do now is put the bottom cover on and uh, we're ready to go. Unplug it. Put our insulator on here. This keeps you from grounding the motor out when the cover's on. Remember we got four screws on the bottom. The longest one goes back in this corner by the rear leveling foot. The other three screws are the same. Push on the foot, secure the cover. Now we're just ready to clean the outside of the projector and it's ready to go. Thank you.